Okay, so I, I want to give you a few theorems of properties of bases that are going to be, um, they're very basic theorems, very elementary, and we're going to use them a lot. So here goes. So let V be uh, finite dimensional. I remember to write it. By the way, some of these theorems are going to be true even for non-finite dimensional vector spaces, but I don't care. Right now, we're interested only in finite dimensionals. Um, so, yeah, so I, I'm supposed to write now TFAE. Oh, I'll, I'll capitalize it. TFAE. This stands for the following are equivalent. The following are equivalent, meaning that I'm going to list now uh, three things each of which implies the others. So it's a, it's a big if and only if, if and only if statement. Okay, so one, uh, B is a basis for V. Two, B is a maximal, maximal, uh, linearly, independent set. So by a maximal linearly independent set, what I mean that it's a linearly independent set, duh, but that it's maximal in the sense that it cannot be contained in a bigger linearly independent set. You throw in even one more guy, that's it. It's not linearly independent. Okay? So that's what, what I mean by being a maximal linearly independent set. And three, B is a minimal spanning set. By which I mean that it's a spanning set. It spans all of V. If you throw away even one guy, it doesn't span anymore. Okay? So it's as small as can be as a spanning set. Okay? Okay, so TFAE, the following are equivalent. One implies two, two implies one. Two implies three, three implies two. One implies three, three implies one. Each two are equivalent, okay? In order to prove this, how many things do I need to prove? Three, four. One, two, 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 three, and three, two, one. Good, but I wanted somebody to first say six, and then somebody to say four, and then you to say that. Okay, so a priori, I need to prove six things, right? That each two are if and only if. But in fact, if I prove one implies two and two implies three, then for free, I get that one implies three. Do you see that? If I also prove that three implies one, then I get that any two are equivalent, right? If I prove one implies two implies three implies one, three things, I get the other three for free, because you go from any other two via one of the others. Do you see that? Okay. So in order to prove this, proof, I need to prove three things, and here goes. The first thing I'm going to prove is that one implies two. So why does one imply two? One said that B is a basis, right? By definition, it means, okay, so we know one, B is a basis. By definition, it's linearly independent and it spans everything. By definition, B is linearly, linearly independent, right? We want to show that it's maximal linearly independent, namely that it cannot be con strictly contained in a linear independent set, okay? So B is linear independent. Um, we need to show that it's maximal. If we add an element to B, okay? So we wanna, we wanna see if, it, if we can make it bigger while still maintaining that property of being linearly independent. Okay, so if we add an element to B, then if we add an element, let's call it W to B, then W 
is a linear combination of the elements of B. Why? I took B. I know it's linearly independent. I want to show that it's maximal linearly independent. So I threw in one more guy, any guy. I'm claiming no matter who you threw in, any W that you added, that's it. W is a linear combination of the others. Why? No, 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 no. It's written here. Because they span all of B. Right, because B is a basis. So aside from being linearly independent, it's a spanning set. Right? So any W you add is going to be a linear combination of the others. Do you agree? Okay. So by definition, B is linearly independent. And if we add an element W to B, then W is a linear combination of the elements of B, since B is a spanning set. Do you agree? Therefore, B together with W is no longer linearly independent. Therefore, B was maximal linearly independent. You cannot add anything without ruining the linear independence. Therefore, B is maximal linearly independent. In that sense. Good? So if you know it's a basis, it's maximal linearly independent. Okay, let's prove that 2 implies 3. I don't know why I have these parentheses around them. Makes it mysterious. 2 implies 3. So now my assumption is that we're looking at a maximal linearly independent set. And what I need to prove, that it's a minimal spanning set. Okay, so let's do that. If B is maximal linearly independent, then any element any element, any vector, any w that we add to b, if it's maximal linearly independent, then any w that we add would make it dependent. If it's maximal linearly independent, that means that when we add something, it's no longer linearly independent. Then we add to B, we'll make, uh, we'll make it dependent. Do you agree? Okay. If it's maximal independent, throw in one more guy, that's it. It's no longer independent. Okay. No longer independent means it's dependent. That means that there's somebody that's a linear combination of the others. Okay? That somebody cannot be any of the original elements in B because B was independent. That somebody has to be W. Do you agree? Good? Let's write that. Therefore, There is, right, intuitively W is extra, but we can write it more precisely, more accurately. Therefore, there is an element which is a linear combination of its predecessors. Oh boy, you, you compile this word for me again. I think I got it right by now. And that has to be W. If it's linearly dependent, suppose the original elements were V1 through VK, and now we add a W. 
If it's linearly dependent, one of the guys is a linear combination of its predecessors. It can't be the V's, because they were linearly independent. It has to be W. So no matter who you try to add, no matter who you try to add, you get that it's a linear combination of the others. Any, vec any vector is a linear combination of those VIs. Do you agree? So that implies, hence, B spans V. You took somebody, W, any W, threw it in and saw that W is a linear combination of the elements of B. So it spans. Do you agree? But that's it. It was a linearly independent set. It spans, right? So now we know that it's a spanning set. Are we done? No, we have to so show that it's a minimal spanning set. Okay, so hence B spans V. We need to show, we need to show B is minimal. Minimal in the sense that if you take somebody away, you no longer span everything, okay? So, if we remove a VI from B, so B, let's say, was V1 through VK, and now you take one of the VIs away, what does it mean for it to be minimal? It means that it no longer spans everything, right? If we removed VI, I claim that it no longer spans everything. Tell me somebody that's not in the span. VI. Exactly. Because if VI were in the span, it would mean that VI is a linear combination of the others. But it can't be because it was a linearly independent set. Good? So if we remove VI from B, B no longer spans V since VI um, is not a linear combination of the other VJs. Because if it were, then the original set B would be dependent. One is a linear combination of the others. Clear? So this proves that 2 implies 3. If it's maximal linearly independent, implies it's minimal spanning. Okay? Finally, we need to show that 3 implies 1. And that would complete the proof. Okay? So now we know that we're starting with a minimal spanning set, a minimal spanning set. We have to show that it's a basis. Okay? So if B is minimal spanning, well, in particular, it's spanning, right? So what remains to be shown is that it's linearly independent, right? So if it's linear, if it's minimal spanning, uh, B is spanning, right? It's a spanning set. Remains to show that it's linearly independent. So how do we show that it, it's linearly independent? Um, if it's not, if it's not linearly independent, so if B is dependent, if B is dependent, it means that there's somebody extra. There's somebody there that's a linear combination of the others, right? But then we can remove it and still have a spanning set, which contradicts the millimality. Do you agree? So let's write that. If B is dependent, then there is a VI, which is a linear combination of 
VJs. Right? There's one guy there that can be written as a linear combination of the others. But then, but then, B without VI would still be spanning. Would still be a spanning set. A spanning set in contradiction to minimality. Contra Diction to minimality. Good? So the proof seems like it's kind of long and but in fact it's just the terminology. If 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 you remember the definitions what it means to be a basis, what it means to be a spanning set, what it means to be linearly independent, what it means to be linearly dependent, then everything becomes really obvious, really obvious. And if you don't remember the definitions, you can stare at this for three hours and it just won't compile. Okay? So if you want to understand this proof and you're feeling a bit fuzzy, Go read the definitions that we had for all these terms that we're using again and again and again. Being a spanning set, being, uh, where is it, linearly independent, gone, be a linear combination, being linearly independent and linearly dependent. Where, where, where are these words on the previous board? Okay, so read the definitions and then read this and you'll see that everything is really straightforward. The, this is really the only place where we applied a previous theorem, which was also very basic. Okay? But really, we just use the definitions. Okay, so there are more properties of bases that I want to discuss, but our time for today is up. So we'll, con we'll, we'll, we'll have properties of bases part two in, uh, in our first lesson uh, next time. Questions? Everybody good? Okay.